Welcome back to Smart Life. Just a reminder, you can watch us live in cities around the country on Biz TV, growing all the time. Now on the air in New York, Philadelphia, and Orlando. Biz TV, it's your biz. And of course, you can view all of our past episodes of Smart Life at moneybizlife.com. Personal relationships, hard to place a value upon, but we know the importance of networking and building those social bridges. And Dean Del Sesto says these relationships are priceless. Dean is the author that I've often quoted on this show of the book called Shift Points, Shifting Your Thinking, Changing Your Life. Dean, welcome back to Smart Life. Good Thank to have you. you. Thank now, you. what is the biggest mistake, if you had to just coin one thing, that most people make in the investment of their time? Hmm. As it relates to relationship? Sure. Yeah. I think um, oftentimes we uh, we get caught up in having too much of our focus be on ourselves, I think, more than anything else. I mean, that is an investment of time. Because because we do. I mean, you hear, if you've had a bad day, go eat chocolate. If you've had a bad day, go to the spa and get a massage. Women are really into this. You know, I need my me time. I think that's a big mistake. Well, it's, it, 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 it's, a, it's a form of medication, you know, to do those things. And I think that they're often there because there's a lack in a relationship. There's a lack of intimacy. There's a lack of trust. There's a lack of uh, connection. And I think the more people invest into relationships, they're gonna, they're, they're, the need for these numbing agents on the outside are not going to be near as apparent. There are times that my wife and I will, in, during the evening, we have, we have a couple choices. We can either sit down and watch TV and medicate with TV, mm -hmm. or we can go out on the balcony and we can enjoy the beautiful view. And we may not have anything to talk about, but inevitably things come up. And as we talk about these things, these are things that we probably wouldn't be on our daily calendar to talk about, and they're usually the rich things. Mm. And they're the things that uh, we, we don't often get to because we're always on the fly. Hmm. You know, it's so interesting you say that because I find myself, and, and this is just a confession, more and more impatient with conversations. Yeah. I write in 140 characters because I'm a big tweeter. Yeah. I'm all over Facebook. I can't stand when I have to write more than a paragraph on Facebook. Yeah. It makes me feel guilty. Yeah. I have guilt over more than a paragraph. Mm -hmm. And when I, I found, it, it recently we had some friends in town and I found that I was, I was trying to listen to them. My listening skills, my, my, my ability to really hear people is diminished mm. I think from just a couple of years ago when social media wasn't such um, such a major part of my life and career and I think that's that's the way our world is moving I'm not mm. saying people should get off of social media quite the contrary I think we need to own it and master it and that's a little bit of what your book talks about as well but how can we come back to appreciating the richness of the art of conversation I think people are more increasingly realizing that the, the digital realm has its limitation, limitations in terms of moving the needle of life, mm. moving the needle of business, moving the needle of relationship, and ultimately it comes down to actually connecting on a one-to-one -one basis. And I would tell people, if you're going to be in a conversation with somebody for a period of time, and look, granted, not everybody is the most exciting person in the, in the world to be with, and there are others that are toxic to be around. But when you're in a conversation, one of the greatest gifts that you can give to the other person is to stay within the confines of that conversation, fully present during it. So mm -hmm. indeed, you do forget about all those other things. And it's actually the greatest gift that you can give to yourself. Because if you're going to be in a conversation for, you know, whether it's 10 seconds or 10 minutes, mm -hmm. be in it for the full time. Mm -hmm. Don't be distracted. You, you, you do a, a disservice to yourself. You wind up leaving the conversation feeling uh, empty, disconnected, uh, some, some level of guilt, and the other person feels like they have been devalued, mm -hmm. that uh, they're not, uh, they don't have any, uh, any relevancy, and you don't do them any service. And, and your ability to speak into their life at some point in the future is going to be diminished by how you sow on the front end. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think that with the upcoming generation, as they're becoming even more and more instant gratification oriented, if that's a term. Yes. Uh, do you think that there are things that we as parents can teach our children about this ability to listen? And as you said, uh, the art of be able, being able to create the questions to get good information and good conversation out of someone. Um, are there certain things that we can teach our children? Yeah, and, and I think one of those is leading by example. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing thing that most of the children who are not following the wishes of the parents are simply following the realities of the parents and what they actually do mm -hmm. and not what they say. 
So I think first and foremost, you have to you have to practice what you preach uh, within within the house, and not only be an example of it, but also create the space for um, for conversations to take place and invest in those conversations that are meaningful to your 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 child. And I remember counseling a man who was disconnected from his kid. I asked him, "What's important to your child?" He says, "I don't know." And I said, "Well, what brand of father are you to your child?" And he says, "Well, disconnected." I said, "Yeah." I said, "How about aloof?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, just make something up of what's important to your child." And he said, uh, "Well, motorcycles." And I said, "Well, you you have means. Why don't you go out this weekend, buy a couple of motorcycles, go out and have some desert time, and you'll have more communication time on the road while you're going out to do something that your child loves." And while you're sitting down at the campfire or whatever you're doing, you'll have a chance to talk and get to know your son in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, idea of parents being relevant to their children with what's important to them mm -hmm. is a basis for the children to start hearing what the parents have to say. That's hard, though, because I think as parents um, enter into, especially the teen years, some of the things that the children are interested in, parents aren't as interested in. Music is one place where I notice a huge disconnect between, not me, but between my husband and my, my yes. daughters. Um, and, and I tend to have that connection with them, mostly because I choose to, honestly. It's not yeah. maybe the music that I would love, but I am going to absolutely choose to love it because, and even if parts of it offend me, or I think it's degrading to women, or there's a cuss word that I don't like, or an innuendo that I don't like, it's okay with me because it's important to me to connect with them. Yeah. It's not condoning it, but my husband sees it as some sort of condoning it, and so that communication is sort of lost. How important, I mean, how, where is that balance for people? I, I think you can be uh, in participation with those things, and you can also just be very playful in your, in your, in your lack of either condonement or approval of it. I like that, playful. You, you, don't, you don't have to take it so seriously. We do forget that a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I think just to, to be playful there is, is one thing, and uh, also to be consistent with it. You know, you, 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 love is sacrifice. Okay, that's something that not a lot of people realize. And mm. I think in many cases, to the level of which you're sacrificing is to the level of which you're loving. Mm. And so there are things that we don't like. There are things that my wife doesn't like. And she even said it, said it to me the other day. She said, Dean, she goes, she goes I, I want to do this. And I was having a hard time getting to that place. But when I do get to that place, it shows real love and she responds with a real intimacy and our relationship winds up becoming you know amazing mm -hmm. yeah. you alluded to it you said uh, you you said something about uh, it being an investment the Bible says where your treasure is there your heart will be also that's kind of the concept you're talking about what is the what is a quick and easy answer to a daily investment in a relationship I mean um, there are so many directions that could go and some yeah. people might think that's financial some people uh, might think that means just having a glass of wine you almost really need to change it up, don't you? Or, or what's the secret there? Uh, I, for many years of my relationship with Kit, I used to think that doing a big thing every now and then would give me an excuse to go into a relational coma for a while. <laughs> In other words, I buy her something or I do something for her, and that gives me credits, if you will. Mm. And it doesn't. <laughs> The big thing is forgotten within a day or two, and when it winds up being empty and we're questioned about why it's empty, we kind of go, well, what about that big thing I did for you? Mm. And I think to answer your question, it's the series of small things that we do, the seemingly inconsequential things that make the difference. The note that you leave. Mm -hmm. I left a, a few uh, a few pictures of a dog that we used to have and a picture of me next to it that was kind of cute, and I positioned it in such a way. And these little things that we can do in relationship with one another, let the person know that we're not back of mind and we're going to launch out a big thing to let you know we're front of mind. It's that valuing of being front of mind all the time. Mm. My wife feels valued when she knows I'm hitting her with little touch points, the text in the middle of the day. Oh, yes. The, uh, the, 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 little, the little shrine that I build her of, uh, of a couple of pictures. Uh, the voicemail that I leave her, you know, the, the language that I communicate with her, the playfulness that I exude. You know, mm -hmm. life, you know it right now, life is heavy. But how important is the element of surprise? Because oh, I think people yeah. get in ruts, don't yeah. they? You yeah. know, my husband this morning, we have some friends in town, and he points out, 
I said something about, I'd set my coffee cup there and he hadn't filled it up and I said something about, you didn't get me coffee. And, and the father from the other family, the husband said, yeah, you need to get her coffee every day. He goes, I do get her coffee every day. <laughs> he gets me coffee every day, but it's the one time that he didn't that I noticed. Yes. It's, it's the element of surprise and changing it up a little that really clicks in our hearts for some reason, doesn't it? It, it does. And, and it's important to think also that what affects our brand as a husband or a wife in relationship mm -hmm. or is it the things that we do or the things that we don't do? Mm. And oftentimes it's the things that we don't do that right. have the most effect because they're clandestine. They're implied and they're expected, but when we don't do them, oftentimes we don't say anything and the, therefore the, the person begins to get more bit embittered inside. And sometimes that can go all the way down the road to where nothing is said, where there's a complete, uh, the person just dies inside relationally. Did you appreciate the PhD I gave you today? Yeah, you know, the doctorate was fantastic. You're it was the fastest you doctorate else in history. You just don't hesitate to <laughs> let me know because here on Smart Life, we'll just give you a PhD. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us.